we're about to start the show, and you know the drill. If you've been here before and you have something important to share, please add a capital letter Q to your comment. And if you are watching live for the first time, please let us know by writing the word new, and we'll give you a nice little welcome. Enjoy the broadcast. Oh, my God. What am I doing here? Um, it came directly to me. Oh, <laughs> Good morning. I was not expecting that because I rearranged the order of my titles. Never mind. It's about me and the computer. Welcome to Coffee and Headlines. Our morning get together live here on Facebook. What did I do? I must have switched something. Well, I know I switched something yesterday. Anyhow, it is Thursday, uh, March 21st. Today is Benito Juarez's birthday. We're going to talk a little bit about that. Oh my God, I'm going to watch that again. And I can, I can see my, I was just like, anyhow, I hope you're humored. I am humored. Today we have a few bits of news. Today we have, um, we, well, we might as well just go there because they're ready to go. Um, it's time to place bets on the new highway. When is the new stretch of the highway from Las Varas to Compostela going to open to the public? Well, it depends on who you ask. For starters, it My bad, I didn't realize I would go into mute mode. It was announced that it would open on um, um, before Semana Santa. According to Vallarta Opina, however, there is no official date announced just yet. This uh, did not stop Vallarta Independiente from announcing that it would be uh, ready by Semana Santa. And then Vallarta en Línea, another news outlet, published that it might be ready by then. So is it going to be ready by then? We don't know. All I know is that it's more than unlikely that I will get to see the new highway stretch tomorrow morning when I head to Guadalajara. Wow, wow, wow. And I don't think I'm going to see it on Sunday night when I return. So better luck next time. <clears throat> and look us back. The American, the American immigrant lady model we talked about a couple of days ago. She's back this time around. Brianna Clay is apologizing or has apologized for having published a less than favorable opinion of the sound made by barrel organs playing on the street. Well, does this mean that she'll get her, her job back? Well, we don't know. She also attempted to clarify some hateful tweets that she had published a few years back about Mexican stereotypes. So all I can think of saying is karma is not kind when you behave badly, I suppose. And today is March 21st, as I mentioned earlier, and we commemorate the birth of Mexican President Benito Juarez, uh, the first indigenous president of Mexico. And PIDA, my Paco, Paco's inflatable digital assistant, has prepared a little something, but I have to let you know, PIDA, his ability to pronounce some Spanish words is still not ideal. So when we get to the point in, we, in which we discuss the state in which uh, Benito Juarez was born, which is the state of Oaxaca. It is Oaxaca and not Oaxaca. <laughs> so take a look and let me know what you think. Benito Juarez, a towering figure in Mexican history, was born on March 21st, 1806 in the village of San Pablo Guelatao, Oaxaca. His life journey epitomizes resilience, determination, and the struggle for justice. Growing up in poverty as a Zapotec indigenous, Juarez faced numerous challenges, including discrimination and limited access to education. However, his thirst for knowledge led him to pursue studies in law. He graduated from the Institute of Sciences and Arts in Oaxaca and began his legal career advocating for indigenous rights. Juarez quickly rose through the ranks of Mexican politics, serving as a congressman and later as governor of his home state, Oaxaca. 
His commitment to liberal principles, including the separation of church and state, earned him both admiration and enemies in equal measure. The tumultuous period of Mexican history known as the Reform War thrust Juarez into the national spotlight. As the conflict between liberal and conservative factions intensified, Juarez emerged as a leader of the liberal cause. In 1858, he assumed the presidency of Mexico, becoming the first indigenous president in the country's history. During his presidency, Juarez faced immense challenges, including foreign intervention from France under Napoleon III. The French invasion aimed to establish a puppet monarchy in Mexico, but Juarez fiercely resisted. His leadership during this time became legendary as he rallied Mexicans to defend their sovereignty. The Battle of Puebla on May 5, 1862, famously commemorated as Cinco de Mayo, symbolizes Juarez's determination and the resilience of the Mexican people against foreign aggression. Although the French ultimately captured Mexico City, Juarez's government continued to resist from the north, refusing to recognize the puppet regime installed by the invaders. Juarez's presidency also marked significant reforms, including the abolition of slavery in Mexico and the implementation of laws aimed at secularizing education and reducing the power of the Catholic Church. His reforms laid the foundation for a more modern and progressive Mexico. Following years of struggle, Juarez's government finally triumphed over the French intervention, and in 1867 he returned to Mexico City in triumph. He continued to lead the country until his death in 1872, leaving behind a legacy of courage, resilience, and dedication to the principles of democracy and justice. Benito Juarez remains a revered figure in Mexican history, celebrated for his contributions to the nation's progress and his unwavering defense of its sovereignty and values. His life serves as an enduring inspiration for generations of Mexicans and people around the world fighting for freedom and equality. If you have enjoyed this content, make sure to join us at Coffee and Headlines, Puerto Vallarta's morning live show featuring news and stories. Oh, we, we can skip that part because we're already here. You say Oaxaca, I say Oaxaca, you say Farmacia, I say Farmacia, you say La Comer, I say La Comer. Enough of that. Let's look at the weather. <laughs> oh, I amuse myself. Ah, sure, Apollo, we all believe that laurel tree you... F what? Oh, that's crazy. Sure, Apollo, we all believe that laurel tree you banged was once a nymph, a nymph named Daphne. Okay, Apollo and Daphne, I have no idea what that is in reference to. All I know is that it is 26 degrees out there right now. Humidity is at 54%. And our weather forecast for today says it's going to be humid today with clear skies throughout the day, a high of 29 and a low of 18. Then tomorrow we're going to enjoy clear skies throughout the day with a high of 28 and a low of 17. And then Saturday, mostly clear skies in the morning with a high of 27 and a low of 16. Now, let me get my screens in order because there's a couple of other things that I want to talk about. Boom, 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 boom. Oh, I need to tell you a story about the photograph that I'm going to show you. You know, we and this has to do with a new business that is opening in Colonia Emiliano Zapata and and it kind of rubs me the wrong way. Of course, it's not about me, uh, but, you know, Colonia Emiliano Zapata is, <clears throat> is um, it's interesting because I've always seen it as a neighborhood that the closer you are to the ocean, the more touristy it feels. But if you walk away from the ocean to the inland section of Emiliano Zapata, the transition is fascinating because it starts gradually becoming the Mexican national traditional neighborhood it's always been. Maybe not so much lately because a lot of um, 
people of foreign extraction have begun moving into the eastern part of the colonia and along with them businesses now i don't know exactly how the city goes about allowing certain businesses to open in certain parts of the city but i was completely taken aback when i learned that well you need to know where the emiliano zapata municipal market is located and it is located in the back end of the colonia and across the street from it is um a lovely uh, fruit and, and produce store and across the street from that there's a white building that has remained unoccupied for the longest time until i learned that what's moving in there is a store that is going to sell Chinese imports. And it's a big space. Now, hold on to your panties because I have nothing against Chinese imports. And I, you know, have to each their own. But when people just start saying, ew, it's from China, I don't get it because everybody consumes products from all over the world and i don't see why we should be uh, upset about chinese products but somehow the idea that a chinese store or a store that sells inexpensive chinese imports is going to move into what little is left of a traditional mexican neighborhood in puerto vallarta which is the back end of colonia emiliano zapata I think on the one hand, it's great that the space is being used. I know that a lot of people still living in that neighborhood will appreciate the less expensive products that you can find there. Um, but I don't know what to tell you. I have mixed feelings about the whole thing. You tell me what you think about this and, um, and uh, we'll take a look at your comments in a second. Um, I also want to let you know that this Sunday, if you don't have any plans and you would like to learn a new craft, my good friend Josh of Josh Shalotl Art will be teaching a tie-dye class at the B of Bros coffee shop in Colonia Emiliano Zapata. And at the same time, the nice folks of Echo a Mano, which is the artist co-op uh, organized by his wife Lucy, will be around to display and sell some of their handmade creations. I would also like to let you know that Josh and Lucy were my guests yesterday during uh, our second episode of The Spotlight, where we hope to put the spotlight on people in town that are producing any type of special event uh, that we should know about, whether it's a fundraiser or a nonprofit or a restaurant opening or a gallery or a, a music event, you name it. So yesterday we had a, um, a wonderful, wonderful conversation. And of course, the episode is live on YouTube and I will leave it there. Uh, and I will leave a link in the show notes so that you can find the episode and watch it if you want to get to know these two wonderful and special friends uh, a little closer. I was, I have been so happy to know them and it's been such a pleasure for us here at Coffee and, and Headlines to always support what Josh and Lucy are doing. They are truly worthwhile people and it's great to see how their projects are evolving for the better. And of course, the spotlight will be back this coming Wednesday. Again, we are looking for anyone that wants to toot their own horn about events that are coming up. So if you know of anyone that would like to join me live, it's just a matter of getting in touch with me. I will publish the upcoming edition later on today so that you can have it in your notes. And with that said, I think it's a good time to jump over to the comment section to see what everybody is up to. And let's see. Oh, I did say that, didn't I? Yes, I did. Today's Music Pre Appreciation Presentation Day this afternoon. I've been talking about this ad nauseum and I will like to make a, a final invitation to see our 
uh, to join me in my presentation this afternoon. It's going to be really wonderful. Let's see. I see a lot of happiness and a lot of good mornings, which I appreciate. Uh, -pum 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 -pum. Oh, thank you, Roger. I'm so glad that you're going to join us at the music appreciation today. It's going to be fabu. Um, Harold, um, I'm curious to know where you're getting this information because the Ministry of Transportation just said, and they would know, that it's not happening uh, tomorrow. Uh, but, you know, if you have a reliable source, we're always up for reliable sources. Uh, let's see what else we have. Oh, speak of the devil, Lucy. It was great to see you yesterday. Thank you so very much for being my guest in the spotlight. And the same thing goes to you, Josh. Uh, you guys are always close to here. And it was great to have you yesterday. Uh, boom, boom, boom. <laughs> Logan cuts to the chase. Let's just call it what it is. The Gavacho Caravan marches east and is continuing up the Rio Cuale. Oh, yes. And it's interesting because and this is not a, a, a criticism or anything, but whereas you used to primarily see uh, touristy looking people south of the Rio Cuale uh, or maybe in El Centro, now I am seeing more and more touristy people or touristy looking people having breakfast, lunch, and dinner in Colonia Versailles and in other parts of the town. And, um, you know, it is what it is. There's good sides to it. There's not so good sides to it. But that's just my humble opinion. Um, let's see. <clears throat> Thank you for those words, Karen. Karen says, yesterday's spotlight with Joshua and Lucy's interview was excellent. Talk about two people with can-do attitudes. It was inspiring, especially Josh's story. I hope their events are successful now and in the future. Thank you for that, Karen, and I couldn't agree more with you. Thank you for watching. Um, Vicky says something that is very true. We all have a right to choose where we shop. I personally will go elsewhere, and that's fair. Uh, -pum 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 -pum. That will be the third Chinese chingadera store in Puerto Vallarta, says Harold. Yes, it is. Remember when we only had three restaurants in town? Remember when we only had three real estate companies? <laughs> ah, the city is growing, isn't it? What? If a tenant pays rent for a space to sell their wares, then they should be free to sell what they want. 90% of what Walmart sells is made in China. Okay. Uh, uh, da -da 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 -da. Sad to see this low-quality products from China versus Mexican products of other options will be in this location. See, I respect your opinion, Spencer, but I have to say that when we start saying things like low-quality from China, you know, my phone, which is probably from China, is a very good quality phone. So while I respect what you say, um, you know, we do we really want to make those kinds of general statements about any country? I'm just asking. And that's precisely what I was afraid of when I mentioned the store. So da 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 da, -da. it is what it is i suppose lucy says even pitillal is full of gringos every day now oh yes uh chris says what has happened to logan the roaming reporter well um logan the roaming reporter it just as yours truly 
We are full-time employees in this town. Uh, we work full-time, and of course, I work, work full-time to bring things to you. Logan works full-time to keep his guests uh, happy at the house that he manages, and this happens to be a very busy time of the year for Muffin. So if we haven't seen him, uh, we just haven't seen him. The problem with China is the human rights violations and violation of child labor laws. Andrea, what does that have to do with connecting with Puerto Vallarta? I'm just curious. Uh, and I don't need an answer. We're here to discuss our wonderful connections with Puerto Vallarta in Mexico, not to discuss what is going on elsewhere in the world. If you want to discuss that, I'm sure you'll find other wonderful forums for it. This is just not one of them. Uh, let's see. Oh dear. What we don't like to support is child labor or people who are not paid a surviving wage. This is important because there are many children that work in Mexico. And, and I know that a lot of people that visit our city think, oh, the children, we must give to the children. But unfortunately, what Joshua is saying is, is, is true many times. You know, a lot of times when children are sent to the streets to work here in Puerto Vallarta, they are doing that because their parents sent them. And I don't know that that is very kosher. In fact, I personally choose not to give to children on the streets or in restaurants because behind every child that is reaching out with his or her hand is a parent that should know better. Uh... Muffin responds back to his day job at the moment, but stay tuned. Lots more fun and content to come past Easter. Thank you very much for that. And this brings us to the end of today's uh, coffee and headlines. I hope you are uh, enjoying yourself. I'm just continue to read your comments. My goodness, it seems like everything breaks apart whenever we talk about Chinese stores. But they're a reality. Um, so there. I hope you have a great day. I hope to have a great um, weekend. I'm going to be gone. As of tomorrow morning, you'll enjoy two special pre-recorded shows that I hope you will enjoy as much as I enjoyed producing uh, them for you. I'll see you back here Monday morning. Have a good one.